خزيان مخبش لا مالو خن اها ال برس خزود اطورا يبتي ولوان ون شاروكينا هسو مقرون قاتو خن اها خرزه اتش دي تون جو خرزن ايديو مد مغزيخ لو خن خشم لو قاطخين من شش ثماني اربع او دي شقل شوبا جمديت اريزونا بس بوشن امر قامت خدا صات ام برس خزود اطورا يبتي ول Mid America Furniture, 7546 North Milwaukee to Chicago. Spoken idio kachulis no kiatit furniture. Debeta office harada gza mattresses. Wina hayura atsuraya zoda ministry khamsha shinne kachulis no kiatit furniture. Itlu designers ach signature by Ashley, Millennium, Benchcraft, Sierra Sleep, Coaster, Jackson, Catnapper, Global Furniture USA, Pulaski. Harada gza itlu financing available. Uham ashayawi lo khalina furniture 50% off. Tikhana shawayu manager shepte. Monday to Saturday from 10 to 6 and Sunday from 11 to 5 with two floors of showrooms. Tamun idu un ask for Mr. G for an extra 5% off. 7737612106 Mid America Furniture. Hadia bichoka no khom mindana luqat min shin shatmani arpa aun di shqil shop ha ju Arizona. So we have Kalu Sulaka which Sulaka means ascension day um 39 days after Easter. So um, I'll give you a little brief history. Um, so, so Jesus ascended 40 days after Easter. I think that's why we do all 39 days. Um, the idea is for little girls to dress up as brides because um, like in the Bible, the church is the bride and Jesus was the groom, the bridegroom. And um, so back in the day, um, there was a man named Malik Shalita, and his wife, um, we don't know her name, right? No, I don't. She got a group of women together, and they would dress as white, and they would hand out um, provisions yeah. during the, an attack, so like food and water to the, the warriors. And... Um, Basically, they, men and women got killed, and that's when this um, holiday came into play. And this was like in 1401, yeah. so it's really old. Um, nowadays, it's mostly done in Atra, um, I think. Maybe here too, but not. we don't know of it as much. Um, people would, uh, the girls would dress up as brides, and then they would go from like door to door and get like candy or sweets or whatever. Um, and now, um, like like I said, the majority of our group didn't know what it was. So our idea was to um, kind of get all the churches involved with it, um, maybe get all the parishes to create some sort of like a play that reenacts the whole story I was just saying. Um, and yeah, do the battle and then we can also get the little boys involved because they can pretend to be the warriors. And um, we, that we can make it more well known by literally sending out kind of like a wedding invitation in a way to all the, the families. Um, and yeah. So they also have this like, tradition where they would um, tie a rope to like the strongest um, branch in the tree. And so people would climb the, um, the rope. So obviously we wouldn't do that on like, our church ground. So we thought like uh, just even having everyone tie like a rope to the tree to kind of symbolize how the small would be a good way to like sell the world. The idea was like they're climbing up, like ascending. Yeah. So in any way that they would be able to do whatever variation they want to use where they're climbing Because different I guess villages do it in different ways. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so our group had Sumika, which is one of the least popular Syrian holidays nowadays, but it's an awesome holiday that we should keep going. Uh, Sumika is S-O-M-I-K-A. Uh, if you're from Atra, it's S-O-M-K-A. <laughs> and uh, so it's celebrated the night before Lent, um, Soma, Kura, it, uh, Easter. And basically what happens is 
a bunch of young adults, which is, I'll get to the um, explanation of what we came up with, dress up in costumes, so Dan, you'd love this, um, <laughs> and you, you get together and you go to uh, a number of households that have their door open for you, and you dress in costume, you dance, you sing, and you educate the, the children, or yeah, the kids, to do soma, and if they break it, then these people will come back, because sometimes there's like a scary concept to it, so you scare the kids into doing soma. And then in return, the households give you money, or, um, or food and sweets, to sort of bribe you away from, from uh, coming back to scare their kids, or to take their kids from, from breaking soma. So the three traditions uh, to revive is dressing up in Halloween. It's, it's basically the Assyrian Halloween, by the way. Dressing up in Halloween-like costumes, um, going to Assyrian homes, dancing and singing, and encouraging children to uh, uh, fasting. Um, yeah, encouraging children to fast. So the idea that we sort of thought about was um, every year on the Tsumika, each youth organization or group of youth can, uh, the night before Lent, go out and get like five, 20 youth members and dress up in costume, choose five to 10 households, and uh, basically go out there and do the whole thing that I just explained, dance, sing, scare the kids into doing Soma, and then um, it could also be a fundraiser where those households donate money to your youth organization. It's not gonna be that much money, but it could be a way of reviving it as well as understanding that that's the old tradition was they would give them money. And um, yeah, so you know, each group would record the whole thing and then we'd post it on YouTube and make it go viral. What do you guys think? This means April 1st is uh, the Assyrian New Year's. And the connection we had to it is that like, like it's our New Year's, it doesn't have, like, it has lots of meaning, it's not just a calendar date. And we grew up knowing that it was a special time. Um, the three traditions that we would provide was having a 10-day celebration like they do uh, back home and bring, like move that to like the West. And then we'd have like a parade in like every city and state, you know, something that non-Assyrians would recognize and notice. And then um, one, one other tradition was um, called the Beard of Spring, where we gather flowers and herbs and make, make a wreath and hang it outside our door. And then, um, and that's basically it. <laughs> yeah. Alright, and after Kavnisan, or Akitu, is um, New Saturday. So, yeah. New uh, just to give you guys a brief explanation, we had to do some research on the history because apparently it used to be a pagan holiday. Um, I knew it and I knew some of the other members of the group knew it as a church holiday. So apparently um, it was called Musaddal and what it was, it was um, when the people in our empire were trying to get blessings by the king, they would wait for him to come out and throw water on them and that would be like a sign of receiving blessings from the king. So. Um, that water was a symbolization of blessings, and it just so happened that later on when we became Christians, that that water is still a symbolism of us being, you know, born into Christ. So we didn't know if we deemed it irony or parallelism between our cultural and our religious roots, but for the faithful, they would say, like, oh, it's all part of God's purpose that this water is still being symbolic because once our king threw water on us, and now our God threw water on us. Anyways, um, from the church perspective, it is celebrated on the first Sunday of summer, and we recognize that every year, and what we do is, you know, obviously we have the kids play, and they have water fights, and we bring, you know, water to the park, either behind the church or the backyard, and then we're just talking about memories about it. Um, but anyways, to go to the questions now, so... We basically connected it as a fun time of water fight celebrations, and now it's really the ceremony that's commemorated every year. And we didn't find three traditions that we could be revived and celebrated, but we did come up with an idea of to unite all of the um, Christians that do celebrate it on the eastern side. So we wanted to do something with the Chaldeans, the Mennonites, 
the Shavaya, the Syrian Orthodox, and the rest of you know all the Christians on the eastern side, and get them together. We call it the Summer Water Festival, and then what we would do is we'd have it advertised on A and B, and we would charge people uh, a small fee, and it would be in this big field, and they could come and stock up with water balloons and water fight, uh, water guns, and then just play all day and call it like a huge water fight. Um, and yeah, that's it. So we had the 1915 genocide. So who doesn't know? Who doesn't know the genocide? Why genocide? Okay, I'm pretty sure everyone knows. So it's celebrated April 24th. Um, the questions were: What connection do you have uh, to this holiday? Um, well, our families uh, have been affected by it. Uh, like I'm pretty sure everyone here has had like uh, grandparents, mothers, whatever, sons, daughters. Everyone press on uh, stories and stuff, right? About you know what happened back during the genocide and their, their parents, how they were treated. So it affects us that way, um, and it's, it's negative, right? And, um, it's never a good thing to hear, like, innocent innocent uh, people who just being killed for no reason. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's how it affects us. Uh, what three traditions can be revived? So we said com uh, community gatherings in the church. Uh, we always we do that for, like, uh, and stuff like that. So we do that for uh, April 24th. It's all social events. Have people actually come and uh, talk about it. You know, elders or whoever, whoever uh, is knowledgeable on that topic, they come. Um, and then uh, in the space below, let's grab whatever. So we said one thing we could do is everyone knows about the Armenian and, uh, and the Greek genocide, but. Everyone knows about the Armenian and Greek genocide, right? But not not many know about the the Syrian the Syrians were affected as well. So what we do is have a march. Uh, everyone everyone around the world, we get the organizations have a march and uh, like in the main cities like uh, in Arizona, we do like Phoenix or some Chicago, LA, and just have a march. And uh, that way, not only does it show, hey, you know, we're affected too, but it tells like it pretty much shows it uh, shows. Turkey, hey, we're still here, we're still talking, we're not going to shut up. So that's that's one way we can do it. Movie screenings, we do movies, uh, movie screenings as well. Like, kind of like The Promise, uh, with the Armenian uh, genocide that just came out. We do something like that. And then uh, maybe we can set up an annual visitation to the homeland, uh, just to show. I feel like that way, well, we feel like that way, uh, actually, uh, people will connect. You know, instead of, oh, you know, it, this is so long ago, it's over, you know, 100 years ago. But, like, when they go and actually see, like, you know, the homeland and stuff, when they actually go and see the homeland and stuff, they're, <laughs> they're all, uh, they actually see, like, what, what happened. And there's going to be, like, tour guides and stuff like that. So that was, that was our um, answers to this question, I guess. <laughs> Shalomalekhon. <laughs> برينا قدوة أطرة أطرة نخراية إن أتلا يا خب قومتا قليشانا قهي عيوتا ديان أتلا هيوي هيوي دي يصير لك أطرة خاقدو ترابا قرطة يا طالي خيرتا لهاوي تمنتيانا وأخنا إتوا لان خامنيانا من يالوبا من عليما بيو الحضري والأخ إن عطت باشمتا لا يذيتو أي كنواتا قو أطرة دفينا أب فيزا لأو خمسة الشغلة إنا قا نخراء قدنا دين إشقيل أطرمنا برابها سنة إلى بها من قمت مشارا بوت خويادة إتلي خاري بوتاز شو هل تمانية دقيقة إلى بلشان تيما ولخان خويادة ديالوبي خويادة ديالوبي إلي شد إستا بخمشة بتريسة شد ألبا وطشامة وطشوخة بو أطرا بو قريبة أطرا هذي بس بت أولي بوتاز ما صرت بلخانا هل لو مالت في شلويدة قوم ديت النهار بشدة ورا بشو لا ما ديال خد إشتاء من برد إيجا بهاولي خدمة من هد من هرياته بتقول خانة ممتنعة من برد ولو ما لا ونخمن يا بهاولي خمن دي 
جو بنا ہے This panel, uh, we're going to be presenting the work being done by Siri to develop a self-help, self-reliance capacities. It builds on the analysis that one century of lobbying and advocating for Assyrian rights has failed to produce real results. Uh, Assyrians must begin to explore and innovate ways of organizing globally to survive and one day thrive in Assyria as well as in the diaspora. We have our esteemed Michael Uesh here, uh, who's the lead researcher and coordinator, and Martin Umaran, the president of AANF, as an early adopter of Assyrian global governance. And this will talk about the updates since last year's presentation. For how progressive he is and where we want to go as the Assyrian nation, especially in diaspora. I want to also thank Joe, the coordinator on uh, the education program, uh, for always helping to fit this in and, and make this a uh, successful agenda. So I get an update on Assyrian global governance. But before I can get into the update, I'm also going to do, uh, it's not a repeat, but just a refresher on what is the foundation behind Assyrian global governance. One of the terms that I've been trying to introduce every time I talk about Assyrian global governance is the words sapere ode. Sapere ode is a Latin term, and it literally means dare to know. But what it means functionally in language is have the courage to face the truth. And let's face it, there's one thing fundamental about human nature. We often don't want to face the truth if it's something we don't want to hear. And so, the message is that we have to accept the fundamental truth that Assyrian actions over 100 years, a century of genocide, have failed us. We have invested in a failed methodology. And we have to have the courage to face this truth. If we don't, we will continue to invest ourselves as the Assyrians, especially in diaspora, in a mode of global organization or non-organization that continues to render us hapless victims uh, in the face of our enemies. And so I always frame this on two conceptualizations. The Assyrian question as foreign determination and the Assyrian question as self-determination. Uh, in Chicago, we had the esteemed Professor Joseph Yap presenting on his research on a century of genocide. And as a young man, no longer a young man, but as a young man, I still remember getting my first copy of his famous book, The Assyrian Question. He was lecturing in Chicago in the 1980s. We all got that. And I remember that was the first book. And what did that introduce me to? The Assyrian Question is Foreign Determination. The entire premise of the book and the entire premise of that understanding is that our cause needs to be pursued as a demand for our rights from others. What are our rights? Let's appeal to Washington, D.C. Let's appeal to the United Nations. Let's appeal to Paris and London. The Assyrian question is foreign determination. That is the failed methodology. And Sepeg Odi, in this paradigm, is meant to get us to shift what's hardwired in our minds as a Syrian activist, from the Assyrian question as foreign determination, someone helping us, to the Assyrian question as self-determination, meaning we help ourselves. And I'm only going to use one anecdote that I've used before to transition to the update. We invested as a nation countless hours, days, in fact years, sadly, in getting genocide recognition. We invested so much in having Western powers 
label what's happening to us as genocide. And on March 17, 2016, then Secretary of State John Kerry said, my purpose in appearing before you today is to assert that in my judgment, Daesh is responsible for genocide against groups in areas under its control, including Yazidis, Christians, and Shia Muslims. We got genocide recognition. On the very same day, a State Department spokesman told the Washington Post, State Department officials, or, or from quoting from the article, State Department officials said that the finding imposes no new obligations beyond what is already being done, but that it could galvanize other countries to step up the battle against the Islamic State. On the same day that genocide was finally recognized, something we all invested in, the very same government authority said, despite recognizing genocide, it doesn't obligate us to do anything more. In fact, we don't intend to do anything more than what we're already doing. We just hope other countries will join the cause. We all invested in it. We all poured our hearts into genocide recognition. We all pursued the Assyrian question as foreign determination, and the return on investment was zero. So what is Assyrian global governance? It is the reorganization of the Assyrian nation globally to begin developing and exercising self-help and self-reliance, plain and simple. We call it Assyrian global governance. That's an umbrella name. But functionally, it means that whether this nation likes it or not, we have to pool our ingenuity, pool our resources towards a self-help, self-reliance capacity, just as any nation does. If we don't do that, we will not survive. The proof is the last century. The Assyrian question is foreign determination. Statistics are simple. Demographic decimation, further subjugation, increasing vulnerability and dependence on others. I don't see another outcome of the Assyrian question as foreign determination, and I continue to challenge anyone to prove that, prove my analysis incorrect. So why do we call it the Assyrian Global Governance Mandate? Human capital ingenuity without a mandate, minus a mandate, is a fail. Many people are phenomenally capable, phenomenally well-resourced to address the challenges, the political challenges that confront us. But just bringing good people together to have some good ideas has never produced an actual success. Whether it's ICANN, Rabi Alama Nakhla Rabi Ivan Kakovich's plan, whether it's the Assyrian parliament that's ongoing right now, pooling people together to develop great ideas but without a mandate will always result in a failure. And I'm an empiricist. I, I do political science. I look for evidence. And I want to present to you the evidence of that. Where human capital with a mandate produces success comes from in this country itself. The United States, your, con your constitution for all the Americans in the room. Under the Articles of Confederation, this country was about to die, or certainly not survive. Under the Articles of Con Confederation, states were in a competition running themselves into the ground, were being exploited by French and British, and survival, George Washington, George Washington himself couldn't marshal the militias to fight America's enemies at the time. Now, during the Articles of Confederation, your founding fathers, whether it was Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, they didn't start conversations in Philadelphia. They were having conversations all through these years. Some of the most unbelievable minds in human history, they had lots of good conversations never produced anything. It wasn't until Philadelphia in 1787, America, that the states, the states mandated, mandated those great minds to gather, produce their ideas, and feed them back. And even then, it was a deliberative process. It was an iterative process, meaning their proposals in Philadelphia were sent back to the states. There was a process of ratification. They, didn't, they weren't able to impose anything, but they didn't need to. They had a mandate. The states wanted them to gather 
and give them the solutions that they knew they desperately needed but couldn't develop on their own. That was when success happened. The proof is in the United States today. So what does global governance look like? We don't know yet. It will be deliberated, it will then be decided, it will also evolve. But we need that mandate to even begin. We need that mandate to bring the people together who will develop the ideas to bring it to fruition. Then comes ratification and then comes operation. So it is, again, shifting the Assyrian question as foreign determination to the Assyrian question as self-determination. It is the reorganization of our nation for self-help and self-reliance. But what it's really about is our own empowerment. Empowering ourselves in the end of victim. The vicious spiral of the Assyrian question as foreign determination is so self-perpetuating. We invest in appealing to others to deliver us from our oppressors. That's where we put our resources. We are, let's be empirical. It's time, it's money. We, it's an investment. There's an opportunity cost. Every hundred dollars you spend in Washington, D.C. is a hundred dollars you didn't spend on yourself. Pursuing the Assyrian question is foreign determination. Every day in the nation's capital lobbying is a day you didn't spend, you didn't spend investing in yourself. But it fails to help you, and so you're further persecuted. What's your reaction to the additional phase of persecution? More investment in the Assyrian question, further appeals for help. This happens on an individual basis. I'm not a criminal psychologist, but in terms of battery abuse, child victimization, the same patterns always display themselves. A sense of powerlessness, appealing to others for help. It has failed us, it will continue to fail us. We have to switch. So the mandate has been sent. The mandate, it's okay, it's okay. The mandate has been sent to federations, organizations, and associations around the world. It's okay, Lila, it's not displaying well on the screen right now, it's okay because I'm not gonna read the letter to you. What I'm trying to show you is that the Assyrian Global Governance Mandate is a letter that has gone out to Shota Puyate around the world and federations around the world. And in a nutshell, what it says, what signatories to this mandate are saying, is we acknowledge, we as a Shota Puta, as a federation, as an organization, as a Tukasa, we acknowledge that the Assyrian question is foreign determination, is a failed methodology, and we are prepared to look towards the Assyrian question as self-determination. And it concludes with a very simple passage. It simply says, the Assyrian organization I represent confers its support for the Assyrian Global Governance Mandate, which will gather experts to develop innovative organizational design proposals in various fields, relevant for Assyrian survival and growth, but especially pursuant to the goal of establishing a capacity for Assyrian global governance. This endeavor is founded upon the mandate granted by existing Assyrian organizations and federations, which will provide the legitimacy for and form the organizational pillars of global governance. But being a signatory to the Assyrian Global Governance Mandate does not prefigure support for a given set of proposals, merely the recognition of the need to develop, a, develop the capacities described in this document and will be shared for consideration, deliberation, consultation among signatories. What that means is the signatories to the mandate are not accepting a prefigured outcome. We don't know the outcome. What they're saying is, we understand that by signing on, we are open to these proposals, we are searching for the answers, and we will deliberate them when they're returned to us, and decide if we want to proceed. At present, the Assyrian Confederation of Europe, its entire executive, has signed on. The Assyrian American National Federation is one of the first signatories the Assyrian Federation of Belgium, the Assyrian Federation of the Netherlands. In fact, right now there's a deliberative process going on with Sweden, Norway, and Germany, and I want to emphasize what I mean by that. In Sweden, just as anywhere, the Federation has said, 
we want to talk about this, we want to interview you, we want to read more, and that's exactly what we're looking for. We're actually looking pe for people who will be thoughtful about this. We don't want a simple signature. We want that engagement. And even on a subnational level, and I'm using this as a sample to show that it's a variety of, of organizations. The Assyrian National Council of Illinois, a standalone organization with its own resource base, has, is also one of the early signatories. On the other hand, you have the Assyrian Foundation of America, not affiliated with any federation, and yet doing remarkable work in its way, has signed on. The Assyrian American Association of Southern California, and if you're on their mailing list, you would know exactly how active they are in terms of the Assyrian question as self-determination. In Sweden, I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, but a variety of organizations have signed up, and that's just a sample. It's federations, but it's also independent associations and even affiliates of federations. And they will bring these conveners together who are experts in their field. And I want to illustrate this with the most simple language. I don't know if you know who Dr. Ephraim Yildiz is. Dr. Ephraim Yildiz is a professor of our language at the University of Salamanca who has developed a tertiary curriculum in Assyrian that has now been adopted by the European Union as the standard. An entire university curriculum. He's developed a standardized grammar text. Dr. Ephraim Yildiz would be a convener, just like a convener acts in an academic department. It doesn't make them the chairperson. It doesn't make them a leader. It simply means they're the ones capable of bringing the best minds in their field together so that one day, hopefully, from California to Krosnodar, in Russia, we have one Assyrian language curriculum that is developed and implemented as a governance mandate. I would be a convener, for example, in governance. My specialty is institutional design. I work on co constitution writing, I work on constitutional operationalization, and when I say that, I mean that professionally. I've worked on it in sub-Saharan Africa, and I've worked on it in North America. And as I said, the process is deliberative and iterative, meaning it's shared with the signatories of the mandate so that they can engage it critically and decide if they want to proceed. So in two months, in approximately two months, the conveners will be meeting at the University of Salamanca. And at this point, I want to call President Martin Yumara to the podium, who is one of the early signatories, and even though Global governance has not started. It can start in terms of praxis, practice. And uh, he's going to talk about the Assyrian American National Federation's redirection to the Assyrian question of self-determination. If we need to build ourselves and strengthen ourselves, work with each other to build uh, for the future. Um, so the couple things that we did to shift was uh, to build ourselves, what we needed to do is establish ourselves again in America. We have a lot of organizations, organizations, uh, AAA of Chicago, Assyrian Association of America of Chicago, of existence, Los Angeles, Buildings and all the events in Ina, Lena Mariani, Achnan Mach Umta, Lacha, Nisha Nilegat, Palach Modal, Michael Marawa. It's important, Achnan, we determine our self interest. We take care of ourselves. Gana, Yamra Gana Pagana, Nisha Dian Yilagat Palach Modal, Pagana, and Bless Abrah Nahraya Hayran, Sabla Hayran. They're going to specify specifically go for their interests. We need to go for our interests. And one, we are a Syrian. There is no question, no denying who we are. Our ethnic identity is being washed away, but we are Assyrian. We respect our Christianity, we are Christian, but we are Assyrian first, and never change that. Uh, I had a chance uh, to go to Washington, D.C. We were trying, we were being marginalized in D.C. and. They said, one, one really point when uh, Bayan Rahman, the representative of the KRG said, um, if, if, you know, what, because they're, they're stealing our land, they're trying to do everything they can to make us leave, force the last people to leave. 
and it's happening in Syria, it's happening everywhere. We need to make sure that we build ourselves. We know a lot of the Assyrians are in the diaspora. We need to build ourselves, and but never give up hope for our people back home. That's our ancestral homeland, we'll never give that up. So we have to focus that. Because what they said was, if we are so bad, why are Assyrians, why are Assyrians, or sorry, they didn't even say Assyrians, why are Christians staying in Kurdistan? And I will never call it Kurdistan. That's Assyria, that's occupied Assyria. To this day, it's been not land. It's our ancestral homeland. It's the home of Bab and Sawan and our ancestral forefathers, and we will never give that up, and that's everything there is Assyrian. But that doesn't mean we, we just hang on to there, but we need to build ourselves and strengthen ourselves here. So what we're trying to do is uh, establish ourselves. So one, with the budgets that we have are limited. We've been, we funding and support. Thank you for coming and supporting the Federation and all of their events and our, and our organizations all around the United States because it's important that we need your support. Um, we established an office that uh, we're taking ownership, uh, rental uh, to have a headquarters where we are to start facilitating in Skokie. There's a reason why in Skokie. Skokie has a population of roughly 60,000, of which 33% are Assyrian. We have no city councilman, we have no representative, except for this year when we instituted and implemented Mr. Billy Haydu to be on the planning commission. We pushed that forward, and we're grateful to add more people there. But the reason is, is because we're 33% of the population, and we can't even fly our flag in, that, in Skokie. We can't even put our statue our genocide statue that we're trying to put in the Heritage Park. That is why, that's, they, they don't even respect us. So we made it a point. A Syrian National Council of Illinois is in Skokie. It's a big community there, uh, organization. And we also have uh, a Syrian Universal Alliance Foundation in uh, Lincolnwood, but we as the Syrian American National Federation headquarters office, our office starting in Skokie. And there's a reason for that because we want to be where our people are, so we can be helping them. Uh, in Turlock, it's, it's, there are a lot more progress in progressing there and, and then other areas because that's where the uh, Assyrians are. It's important to be there. So how can we move forward and strengthen? So why we're in Skokie again, we said we're 33% population, so public-private partnerships, uh, development of an investment portfolio. We have to start looking, Mirpa um, Sam, David, Mirwada into uh, uh, 40 acres in, in Turlock that they, they rent out to a farmer who has almonds and, and potatoes and farms. Um, it's important to build investment revenue generating properties to develop ourselves as a community. We need the support of everybody to come together and, and build our base. We build ourselves here and then we build our portfolio. I come from an investment background where it's important to build your assets and then tangible assets just like real estate and others where you can also use for your community and help your people, but also connect with the government that they're gonna have to take. You're, if you're 33% of the population, there are resources that go to your, your, your people, that should go to your people. You, if we build our organizations to, to have them there, they have to provide by that, because that's our tax dollars going there, so we need that to come to our people to build ourselves. But also, uh, local government engagement is important because uh, LA, Shotabut in LA, Southern California is, is a main part of this and so is uh, uh, New Britain, uh, uh, the association in New Britain, Connecticut who also work with our local politicians and in Chicago as well, that we try to work with our local politicians, establish our connection with them so we can be the voices for our people. No longer can we stand and we allow individuals to work you unilaterally on our issues. We need to come together as organization heads and leads. As Michael said, federations and organizations are important for this purpose because Ahlan, we're established. We need to build our base. We need to go forward and, and establish our strengthening. And that's important, local strengthening. We need to connect with the people. So um, our financial reports and, and audits. So this is my first year as a president. And my goal is to have full transparency with everybody. We had $80,000 budget. Uh, sorry, $80,000 revenue uh, that came in from last year and this year. Over the um, uh, majority of that funding, what we have left, what we have, have gone to helping our people, helping ourselves, not giving to any uh, different things that are not necessary, but just focusing on helping our own people here in America and in Montreal. So it's in a, yeah, so, so developing to, uh, 
establishing ourselves and, and funding and supporting our, our, our event, our organizations and what we can do for our, our, our people programs and everything is important. But one thing what we're trying to do here is have non-Assyrian voting members of the Federation, you the people, come give us your ideas and help us make Federation and the Assyrian community as a whole better. So we're including uh, means to develop non-voting Assyrian uh, non-voting members to contribute to engage uh, building organizational linkage uh, with the Assyrian Art Institute of, of America uh, is it Ars of America is it Assyrian Art Institute AI AI is an uh, important Ibrata uh, Nora bit Lacy with Yusuf Lacy by Abasipta Teto Lacha Shuriktela Amman she is uh, a part of ours as a partner of the Federation and what we did is we reached out we reached out to Assyrian Art Institute, we reached out to the Assyrian American Bar Association uh, that this was established to build partnerships on strengthening our community with non-members non within our, but to help us as a community, we needed them all to come together because our weakness is their strength and we can be together and, and build for the future. And I thank you for being a part of it and look forward to many years of uh, partnership and working together. Um, the amendments that we're trying to make for the connections for the future. We have a constitutional convention this year. We, we stopped our meeting, just so make sure, it's important. So we're having constitutional amendments. One, uh, one that we're presenting is global linkage with federations. So this year, I invited all of the federation presidents. Howie Basime, Miokra David David, Australian, uh, Assyrian Australian Federation, Epanina ANF, Assyrian Australian National Federation, the TL Dabrana Dia, Shautupela Amman, in a and he in Europe and that Midru Lemasi was Zahmatio budget wise, Rabbi Mnetadatiwa, and they're focusing on their, they're actually having a uh, European convention in October, so they're focused on their, their budgets are limited. But we still have a, we're building a relationship. So, with Michael Miller, Rabbi Mine, it's not in the Ghana, Ghana, it's Assyrian global governance to come together, be united, and work on 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 things together as federations. Because we were established in 1933, and we need to uh, work with all of the federations around the world to help our people, and that's important. The other issue uh, is the resources used for internal strengthening, and the third is uh, the crying <coughs> violations of our rights and never stay silent. We need to be. We need to focus on. Strengthening ourselves. Like I said, we have organizations, we have opportunities, we need to have programs, we need to have youth, we need to have everybody join to make it stronger. There are organizations around the United States that you can. It doesn't take a lot because I'll tell you what, there are organizations working with a few people in Aduna Arab, Wada Shula Khanana. So whatever you can do to help, join the organization is so we can strengthen ourselves. It's important everywhere we are. Mid-America Furniture, 7546 North Milwaukee, Chicago. office and mattresses. We in a Hayura Atsurayazo, the Ministry of Shashin, Furniture. It's designers ach Signature by Ashley, Millennium, Benchcraft, Sierra Sleep, Coaster, Jackson, Catnapper, Global Furniture, USA, Pulaski. Haradaz it financing available. Uhamashayawi loha line of furniture, 50% off. Tikhana Shawayu manager Shepte. Monday to Saturday from 10 to 6 and Sunday from 11 to 5 with two floors of showrooms. Tim would idu and ask for Mr. G for an extra 5% off. 773-761-2106. Mid-America Furniture. Asijan Michael Smani Arpo Show what's the actual show what's many or just super super. And it's a whole more checker and an kaitel a shita eat saxit on a parted I know on. Uka hamet I know on salamit asijan Michael Hazari let cabbage chilmarana wound ill retina specialist. Asijan Michael Purkali will pan it as you take so be Chicago, Wisconsin. Ill board certified with Larpo Metchu, Chicago, Niles, Vernon Hills, Woodstock. Asijan Michael ill a whole mother to me on some Atsurae, who aren't she macro whole mother laser surgery, who are had a retina surgery, Joa Fizu. خزیار مخبتی بشه قنخان من خا 
خورزه خاطر دیل بتهای قلو خون من سنخره تونی کالگراکوس آن بتوان لچک ایمیل سر هدف زیه ولی قلو خون لیگل ادوایس چه چپته؟ این اتلاف خون اخنا خون خش ما سنخیات قانون و دن ایمیل ات tsk ات kalola dot com. هدیه بچه قلو خون من دهه خورزه تونی کالگراکوس. خزیان مخبه تیپ دیا شپته ایلا باسد پرسنل انجری. Money, auto accident, truck accident, bike accident, motorcycle accident. The number one thing you have to do if ever injured is to seek help. Whether it's calling the police or the ambulance, you have to seek help. You can never ever leave the scene of an accident. Number two, get crucial information from the other driver. The driver's license number, address, telephone number, so on and so forth. Now, with regards to technology these days, you're able to take pictures from your phone, or if you have a camera laying around, you could take pictures of the damage of your vehicle, just to show how severe the impact was. If you're injured, we recommend you seek medical attention immediately, whether it's the emergency room, or whether it's follow-up with your physician, or any other doctor out there that can seek and help with your physical injuries. By law, you have to notify your insurance company. Even if it's not your fault, you have to notify your insurance company. Don't worry about a claim being against your claim. It's not. Uh, we could always set it up where the other driver's claim and insurance policy is affected by the occurrence. Protect your rights. You always have rights with regards to personal injury. Never ever think that you cannot seek the attention and help you need. If you have questions, always feel free to call my office, 847-982-9516. That's 20 Arpashawa. We have offices in downtown Chicago and suburbs. Thank you very much. We all have that one person we call, no matter what the situation or event. Who do you call when you've had a stressful day at work? When you get the news that you're having your first child or that you landed your dream job? Now, what if you or a loved one have been injured? and need advice. Who do you call? Think about it.
من امريكا فرنتشر 7546 نورث ملواكي دي شيكاغو تبوخن ايديو قد شلس نقيات فرنتشر دبيتا اعفز هر عدغ زي ماترسز وينا هيورا عطو رايا زودا منسري خمشا شنق قد شلس نقيات فرنتشر اتلو ديزاينرز اخ سيجنتر باي اشلي ملانيوم بنشكراف سيارا سليب كوستر جاكسن كاناب و غلوبل فرنتشر يو اس اي بلاسكي هر عدغ زي تلو فاينانسين افيلبل و همه شياوي لو خلاينا فرنتشر 50% اف تيخنا شواوي مانا جي شبته Monday to Saturday from 10 to 6 and Sunday from 11 to 5 with two floors of showrooms. Tamun idyu un ask for Mr. G for an extra 5% off. 773-7612-106. Mid-America Furniture. خزيان مخبى على خبيتا آخر خوتا من زها خرزا والتحبخ بيوخن شبتت بيتايلا من يوم من عودة شلو برس خزود عطو رايبتي والآن وان شاروكينا هسو بمارون بوشمشينا وخيا أمتا عطو رايبتا.